Okay. Thank you. Uh, shall I start now? Good evening, everybody. On behalf of AOI West Bengal, I welcome you all in today's Srimoti Rashmani Mukhopadhyay Memorial Oration to be delivered by Dr. Devodip Chakraborty, an eminent oral and maxillofacial surgeon of Kolkata. You are aware that due to this COVID-19 pandemic, we are continuing all our academic activities in virtual platform. This oration is the first among all the activities of this academic year. Srimuthi Rashmani Mukhopadhyay was the mother of our respected professor, late Dr. S. D. Mukhopadhyay, a very famous and student-friendly prof teacher. Professor Mukhopadhyay had written books on ENT, which is still followed in undergraduate and postgraduate courses in ENT. Professor Mukhopadhyay served long years at Calcutta National Medical College as head ENT department before his retirement in early 90s. I now pass on the mic to our beloved treasurer, Dr. Professor Doipan Mukherjee, who will introduce Dr. Devudit Chakraborty. Over to Doipan. Good evening and namaskar to all of you. Uh, as because Dr. Stiyarsi Sporman is facing some uh, problem in his uh, personal front and uh, in connectivity issue. So I am taking this responsibility to introduce Dr. Devodip Chakraborty. He, uh, he is BDS from Dr. R. Ahmed Dental College in the year 1998, FDSRCS from Royal College of Surgeons of England in the year 2001, uh, trained in UK till 2003 and then returned to India, uh, held teaching posts in Lucknow, Bilashpur and Kolkata till the year 2017. Now, he is in exclusive oral and maxillofacial surgery practice in Peerless Hospital and Woodlands Hospital in Kolkata. I welcome Dr. Devodik Chakravarti in this prestigious oration. Now, over to Dr. Devodik Chakravarti for this oration. Uh, Sneashish, are you okay with your connectivity? I think so. So, uh, so I have introduced Dr. Devodip Chakraborty. Please say a few words. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my connection. Uh, there was some connection problem. Uh, I welcome all the uh, audiences, members of UI West Bengal, uh, who have joined to this program, uh, the prestigious uh, Rashmani Mukhavata Memorial Oration. And we have with us today Dr. Devoti Chakravarti. Dr. Dwipan Mukherjee has introduced him. Uh, so without any further delay, we, uh, start, uh, we should start the oration. And it is uh, our custom to present a medal for uh, the orator, uh, which uh, I cannot, we cannot uh, hand over physically. So I can show this medal. To Dr. Devadit uh, Chakravarti. It is written here that Rasmani Mukhavata Memorial Oration, Orator Dr. Devadit Chakravarti, uh, the AI West Bengal, 18th April 2021, Kolkata. Okay. Uh, so uh, I uh, hand over the platform to Dr. Devadit Chakravarti. Hello. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Is it clear? Hello? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure uh, to be here uh, this evening. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to thank the Association of uh, Otolaryngologists of India, West Bengal chapter, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, for this uh, prestigious oration, the Srimoti Rashmani Mukhopadhyay uh, Memorial Oration of 2021. And I hope to do justice to it. Uh, as um, told by Dr. Mukherjee, I am an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. And he has given you um, about my training and where I work. So um, I'll just explain a bit about my topic. Uh, it's, um, a, it's called a stitch in time, surgical management of oral cancer, the MaxFax way. MaxFax is a very, uh, is, a, is an abbreviation of maxillofacial, very popular in UK. 
and it is becoming popular in India also. Uh, there is no max fax way as such. It is all we all follow the same principles of surgery, which I'm going to highlight on. And uh, but we have a few advantages. Actually, we share some of those advantages with ENT uh, because we open the mouth and have a look inside. When you examine the throat and we examine the mouth and the teeth, we have a look inside the uh, oral cavity and the mucosa. So we have an opportunity to have a look inside the mouth more than other specialities who are operating on oral cancer. So we can examine the oral mucosa routinely and detect suspicious lesions and uh, pre-malignant conditions and monitor them. Hence, we can decide early when to biopsy and we have a very high suspicious mind and we have a low threshold for biopsy. So this is uh, the advantage we share. And apart from that, what maxillofacial surgeons uh, share is our dental training where we obviously highlight on the rehabilitation after cancer management. We see a lot of cases done all across India where they only concentrate on treating the cancer and dealing with the lesion. And once it is cured, they often don't think about the quality of life of the patient. With the patient, even if they live 20 years after the surgery, they have to live in a society and they have to eat their food and swallow their food and live a, a, a normal life. So hence, we always concentrate on rehabilitation, giving the patient teeth so that they have a cosmetic outcome and a functional outcome in the function of the oral, muco oral cavity. So they can chew their food and leave, uh, live a normal life. So that is where we have a slight advantage um, over the other specialties. Uh, I must reiterate that I'm not here to teach anybody uh, anything. Most of the things that I'm going to say today, most of you know anyway. Uh, I work very closely with my ENT colleagues in uh, PLS Hospital and um, Woodlands Hospital. And I have learned a lot of things from them uh, along the way as I have uh, practiced. So what do oral and maxillofacial surgeons do? Uh, I've taken this from the website of the uh, Royal College of Surgeons of England. Uh, it is often seen as the bridge between medicine and dentistry. Oral and maxillofacial surgery is a surgical speciality concerned with the diagnosis and treatment of diseases affecting the mouth, jaws, face and neck. The scope of the speciality is extensive and includes the diagnosis and management of facial injuries, head and neck cancers, salivary gland diseases, facial disproportion, facial pain, impacted teeth, cysts and tumors of the jaws, as well as numerous problems affecting the oral mucosa, such as mouth ulcers and infections. So this is not something that I have invented. It is coming straight from the uh, website of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. So first, uh, about today's topic, I'm going to discuss oral cancer, which is the sixth most uh, common cancer worldwide Lifestyle, habits, demographic, as well as genetic factors influence geographic variations in the incidence of oral cancer. For example, oral cancer is the most common cancer in India and accounts for 35% of all newly diagnosed cancers in men. The etiology of oral cancer is well established and in most instances, the consumption of tobacco in any form and alcohol being the most common etiologic factors Betel nut is another important fact, uh, cause of uh, oral cancer, especially among Asian population. And uh, something that is very, uh, the awareness is very low among patients. And it is our responsibility to make them aware that betel nut, especially um, pan, uh, pan masala and stuff, they can cause oral cancer. So, like I said, uh, it is very important to diagnose the pre uh, predisposing conditions. Since we often look into the mouth along with ENT colleagues, we can uh, look at dysplastic leukoplakia, which is a white lesion, uh, erythroplakia, which is a red lesion, speckled leukoplakia, which is a, a mixture of red and white, uh, oral side mucous fibrosis, which is very common where there are fibrotic bands in the buccal mucosa and there is reduced mouth opening, sublingual keratosis, where there is keratosis on the ventral surface of the tongue, lichen planus 
and chronic candidosis. All these conditions have a tendency to transform into oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma of, of varying uh, proportions, but we must uh, diagnose these and keep a close eye on this. Sometimes we can do oral cancer screening with toluidine blue, which is a dye uh, which um, is rinsed in the mouth and it uh, binds to nucleic acids and can help us to guide when and where to biopsy if there are changes in a wide area in the oral mucosa. So this is how a homogeneous leukoplakia looks, a white patch that cannot be wiped off. Malignant transformation is around one to 2% in five years if left untreated. Like, if they're, like in the right side, the photograph, if you see a lesion like this, it is better to go for excisional biopsy. But in a lesion on the left, it is a wide area. So it is uh, very important to do uh, incisional biopsy and um, keep a very close eye on it. Even if it comes as non-malignant or non-dysplastic initially, I think it is very important to keep a close eye on it and maybe biopsy again and again over time. So pre-malignancy, like uh, on the left, you can see leukoplakia with um, dysplasia. You can see the redness in the center. And on the right, you see sublingual keratosis, which is whiteness in the uh, ventral surface of the tongue. Chronic hyperplastic candidosis is another uh, condition which can transform into oral cancer um, over time. So it is uh, conditions like this also, we have to keep a close eye on it. So what is dysplasia? Dysplasia is a, uh, is a condition where there is a loss of the organization of the cellular structures in the mucosa. Uh, histologically, the nuclei stain more densely. There's little surrounding neoplasm. There's deep cell keratinization and loss of organization all along the uh, layers of the mucosa. You can see two uh, slides um, which shows the different one is without dysplasia and one is with dysplasia. This is a controversial topic, carcinoma in situ. It's a controversial term used for severe dysplasia where abnormalities extend throughout the thickness of the epithelium. Only invasion of connective tissue is missing. This is a goal of treatment. This is what I said. The goal of treatment is multifaceted. The ultimate goal of treatment, this is quoting from Jatin Pisha's book. Uh, that is why I put it in, in uh, within uh, quotes. Uh, it is the ultimate goal of treatment of cancer of the oral cavity is to eradicate the cancer, preserve uh, the restore and restore the form and function, minimize the sequelae of the treatment and finally prevent any subsequent new primary cancers. So I will um, reiterate on the fact of the restoring form and function which is very important. I see a lot of people roaming around with hemimandibulectomies without any reconstruction and their lives are miserable. They are free of the disease, but they cannot chew. They are on semi-solid diet for years on end. Even if they are cured, they are living a curse. So it is our duty to uh, make sure this does not happen to our patients. So the sites, as you all know, the lower lip is the most frequent site of oral cancer overall, but the tongue is the most frequent affected site within the mouth. In oral cavity, majority of the cancers are concentrated in the lower part of the mouth, particularly in the lateral border of the tongue, the adjacent floor of the mouth and the lingual aspect of the alveolar margin, forming an U-shaped area extending back to the oropharynx. So these are the sites, some uh, pictures of early cancers. So how does an early squamous cell carcinoma look? In early stages, it looks like a, it's a painless red speck or speckled or white patch and only a minority are ulcerated. As the carcinoma enlarges, it may develop into a raised nodule or become ulcerated. Induration results from inflammation and fibrosis and the infiltration of the tissues. By the time a carcinoma has formed an indurated ulcer, with a typical rolled out border, it will have been present for quite some time. Hence, I come back to my topic. It says stitch in time. So this is the biggest challenge of treating oral cancer in India. A lot of our patients come to us when they have already tried all sorts of home remedies and alternative therapies. So uh, a stitch in time is often missed. So as soon as it comes to us, it is very important to have a, lay th a low threshold to biopsy and give a diagnosis and give our definitive treatment as early as possible. So next coming to biopsy, 
uh, it is another challenge is uh, the patient conception that biopsy will spread the disease to all parts of the body. So we have to convince the patient that the biopsy is just a removal of some tissue for diagnostic purpose. And it does, it will not cause cancer to spread all along the body. So there are various types of biopsy, oral histology, oral cytology, aspiration biopsy, incisional biopsy and excisional biopsy. Oral cytology has very limited application. Aspiration biopsy is mainly for nodes, uh, which are prominent and we can do a node to find out whether it's a metastatic node. Mainly incisional biopsy and excisional biopsy are used. Incisional biopsy are for larger lesions and excisional biopsy are for lesions which are less than one centimeter in the widest diameter. In this case, we can do a complete excision with two to three millimeter of normal tissue and send it for histology. And if it comes back as malignant, then we do further resection to give that one centimeter uh, margin. So uh, incisional biopsy is obviously taking a sample. Uh, in a large lesion, we often take more than one area uh, that needs to be sampled. Uh, so the technique is a uh, representative area is biopsied in a wedge fashion and uh, a narrow, uh, deep um, um, lesion, uh, biopsy is better than a broad, shallow one. And all necrotic tissue should be avoided. So in this, in this diagram, you can see how we should go for biopsy. Uh, we should take a little bit of normal tissue and uh, we should take all the uh, layers of the epithelium going into the connective tissue so that the, uh, the um, uh, histopathologist can have a look at all the layers. So anything that is shallow uh, is, should be avoided at all costs. So these are the some of the cancers that we often see because people come to us um, after they have tried, exhausted all attempts of everything. And they come to us at these states, which are obviously malignant. And some cases are even as big as this, where you can see on the right uh, and the left, they are quite wide. So uh, TNM classification, I won't go into details. You would all know about TNM classification. T stands for the size of the primary tumor. N is for regional lymph nodes and M is for distance uh, metastasis. So this is a staging. It depends on the TNM classification. Higher the stage, the poorer the prognosis. So it is important to stage uh, the disease uh, uh, with the help of your clinical attributes and your investigations so that you can give the patient uh, a good idea about the prognosis of the condition. So current available uh, treatment modalities are surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, combined modality treatment, uh, chemotherapy as um, in a single has a very, very limited um, role. Uh, primary and secondary prevention strategies, including lifestyle changes like uh, quitting all oral habits and uh, chemo prevention, uh, like um, uh, antioxidants and uh, retinoids. So these are the factors uh, affecting uh, choice of treatment, the tumor factor, patient factor, and the physician factor. Tumor factors are the primary site, the size, the location, proximity to the bone, man, mandible or maxilla, status of the cervical lymph nodes, previous treatment, if any, and histologic type, um, grade, and depth of invasion. I will go into details about all of these in a minute. So site, the lip has a long-term uh, cure and favorable prognosis. Heart palate and gums have intolerant behavior, low risk of lymph node metastasis. Tongue and floor of the mouth and lower gums have high risk of lymph node metastasis. Location wise, uh, certain primary areas of the oral cavity are easily amenable to initial treatment with radiotherapy, such as primary tumors of the tongue. In, um, in contrast to these, uh, those that are situated in proximity to the bone, such as lesions in the gum and the heart palate. Primary uh, tumors located in the anterior part of the oral cavity has a lesser dissemination to the regional lymph nodes compa compared to similar stages, a uh, stage lesion in the posterior part of the oral cavity or oropharynx. So lymph node metastasis, the sequential progression of uh, metastatic spread occurs from primary oral cancer. The first echelon uh, lymph nodes are oral, uh, oral cancer are located in level one, two, and three in the neck, 
with a relatively infrequent dissemination to level 4 skip metastasis to level 5 does not occur therefore or occurs very rarely therefore in planning elliptic uh, neck, uh, dissection for regional lymph nodes for micrometastasis and clearance of lymph nodes at level 5 is not necessary so histology squamous cell carcinoma greatly predominant in the oral cavity and account for uh, over 90% of the primary malignant neoplasms in the oral cavity. Second most frequent histology uh, is tumors of minor salivary glands like um, uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, acinic cell carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, adenocarcinoma. And uh, the treatment is, surgical treatment is very similar to oral uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma, but the uh, role of chemotherapy and radiotherapy varies. Uh, if there is a polymorphous, um, uh, low grade adenocarcinoma and verrucous carcinoma they metastasize very very rarely hence neck dissection is normally not required for these two uh, conditions but a wide local excision is advised uh, primary mucosal melanomas and tumors of soft tissue are rare but i'll show you one case uh, in a in a minute uh, all other primary malignant tumors in the oral cavity except for lymphoma are treated by surgery so this is histological uh, grading. I will not go into details. Uh, the main thing is the worse the, um, uh, the, the, the higher the number, uh, the staging, the worse is the prognosis. And it all depends on the differentiation. So the, the poorly it is differentiated, the worse is the prognosis. But again, uh, contradicting that, while histological grading of lesion reflects the aggressiveness of the tumor, but it is in itself has never been shown to be a uh, be an independent parameter of prognosis on multivariate analysis. On the other hand, the most important histologic feature of primary tumor, which heavily impacts upon the selection of treatment and eventual prognosis, is the depth of invasion. The in situ and superficial invasion lesions are highly curable and the thicker deep infiltrating lesions have adverse impact on prognosis. So on this diagram, you can see how um, the uh, nodal metastasis and the prognosis over five years uh, varies. So if it is two millimeters or less, the overall incidence of nodal metastasis is around 13% and five year survival, uh, dead, uh, five -year survival rate is 97%. So with 3% patient dead over five years, if it is more than eight millimeters, on the other hand, the overall incidence of nodal metastasis is 65% and the uh, patients dead within first five years is as high as 35%. So in general, thickness of the lesion is appreciated by palpation and it is a very good indicator of deeply invasive lesions versus superficial lesions to help decide upon the need for elective dissection of regional lymph nodes and uh, in a clinically negative neck where you cannot palpate any lymph nodes. Obviously, in today's day and age, we have a lot of investigative uh, tools, but often they do not give us a very good idea. Sometimes the enlarged lymph nodes are reactive, but we have to still go for clearance of the neck nodes. Patients with advanced disease, that is those uh, presenting with uh, spread of uh, to the regional lymph nodes or with large primary tumors like T3 and T4 lesions are candidates for consideration of combined modality treatment. So the patient factors, obviously patient age, the general medical condition, tolerance for treatment, occupation of the patient, acceptance of compli and compliance by the patient, and obviously in our country, the socioeconomic conditions. There are a lot of uh, patient factors which uh, we have to discuss with the patient before we embark upon the journey. Physician factors, obviously expertise in various disciplines, including surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, rehabilitation services, dental and prosthetic support, psychosocial support are all crucial in bringing about a, su a successful uh, outcome of the therapeutic program. Hence, it, is, it should be always a team effort. It's not a one man show. Outcome of early tumors treated with by surgery or radiotherapy is initially in initial uh, definitive treatment are comparable. You can see on this uh, uh, in this uh, diagram that the uh, the graph are mimicking each other. 
the uh, the upper one is the for the surgery and the lower one in, which is darker is radiotherapy this is for a single modality treatment you can see uh, initially the uh, both are um, in the 80s but surgery always has a better outcome if in a single modality treatment but i would reiterate that the higher the stage the combined modality treatment should be considered very seriously and for stage uh, 3 and 4 combined modality treatment is definitely required so observations of two prospective randomized trials of adjuvant chemotherapy has shown that patients who have extra uh, capsular extension of the disease uh, of metastatic in metastatic cervical lymph nodes and those have positive margins have a significant improve in the regional control and disease free survival by addition of chemotherapy to to post operative radiotherapy compared to post operative radiotherapy alone but often with chemotherapy they can develop uh, grade 3 and grade 4 toxicity which can cause severe or prolonged morbid morbidity i will uh, discuss about uh, the chemotherapeutic principles uh, at the end of of the lecture so coming to the surgical principles excision of tumor must include excision of the some normal tissue ideally we take about 1 cm margin but it depends on the characteristic invasion pattern of the tumor in oral scc the end block principle should trans, uh, often translates into removing the primary lesion with draining lymphatics and the lymph node chains contained within the fascial envelope of the neck so when to consider resection of the mandible i mentioned mandible here but the similar principle applies to the maxilla as well uh, but maxilla is obviously the the bone anatomy is different and the bone type is also different uh, when carcinomas show radiographic or scan evidence of bone invasion the lesion becomes a t4 lesion and a continuity resection is very important so in these cases we go for a hemimandibulectomy when lesion is clinically adherent to the periosteum uh, a continuity resection is again required one possible exception is a tumor that approaches the cortex but is clinically separated from it and removal of the cortex as an anatomical barrier is valid in this context so in these cases in the mandible we do a rim resection and in the maxilla we just take a chunk of the cortex uh, cortex and cancellous bone to just uh, to achieve the 1 cm clearance Uh, on the on that aspect of the tumor so coming to neck dissections as you all know there are five levels of the neck so there are many types of neck dissections initially the full radical neck dissection was the main uh, workhorse but gradually it has uh, it has it still has its uh, use which i'll uh, i'll explain Uh, it includes the extirpation of the sternocleidomastoid the internal jugular vein and the spinal accessory in composite with lymphatics contained in the cervical fascia and fatty contents this surgery extirpates the fascia from all five levels of the neck it also includes extirpation of the tail of the parotid gland and the marginal mandibular gland of the facial nerve but this surgery has lot of morbidity and lot of deficits uh, after surgery hence uh, the functional neck dissection came into play in 1967 boka and pinyataro introduced the functional neck dissection uh, with the correct assertion that the uh, lymphatics do not enter the sternocleidomastoid muscle the carotid sheath or the epineurium of the spinal accessory nerve this surgery peels the cervical fascia carotid sheath and fatty con contents of all five levels uh, from these structures and preserves them the supramoid neck dissection is a slight modification of the boka functional neck dissection removing contents of levels 1 2 and 3 so you in this diagram you can see the di difference um, uh, from a radical neck dissection to the supramoid neck dissection uh, which is supramoid neck dissection is the workhorse in oral cancer so modified another term is modified uh, radical neck dissection uh, there are many types of modical uh, modified uh, radical neck dissections in fact functional uh, neck dissection is a type of modified radical neck dissection but the uh, commonest one that was used earlier was the one that um, removed most of the structures of full uh, radical neck, neck dissection but preserved the uh, spinal accessory nerve Uh, carcinomas in the oral cavity are associated with a lymphatic spread into the posterior triangle of the neck 
only 0.9% of the time. Hence, sacrifice of the spinal accessory nerve is not necessary. But the choice obviously is uh, the surgeon's prerogative and depends on how he is trained. Generally, uh, in not neck, we do a functional neck dissection uh, or a supramoid neck dissection levels one, two, three, which is also called the prophylactic neck dissection. In a N1 neck, we do a functional neck dissection doing the um, considering the level four and sometimes the level five, but generally the level four up to the level four. In N2 and N3 neck, MRND or a full radical neck dissection is recommended. So when we do um, do a neck dissection, these are the common anatomical structures that you will uh, encounter uh, that is shown in this diagram. So coming to the uh, common incisions, these are the, all the list of incisions. So these are the diagrams. Uh, the most popular ones obviously are the apron incision, the McPhee incision and the Schobinger incision. Uh, now coming to more interesting uh, part of the presentation, we'll come up, uh, do some clinical cases. Uh, this is a gentleman uh, who was 67 years old uh, with oral cancer in the left buccal mucosa extending from the, uh, up to the corner of the mouth, uh, up to the retromolar triangle. And he had uh, reduced mouth opening as well uh, because he was uh, a smoker. Um, uh, occasional uh, alcohol, um, alco occasional alcohol user, and a regular beetle quid chewer. So, this was the uh, incision that was planned. So, the subplatysmal flap is being raised, and you can see the greater auricular nerve that has been preserved. So the the neck dissection is in progress. You can uh, assess the sternocleidomastoid and the uh, internal jugular vein underneath it. So we did a lip split uh, to get access to the uh, retromolar area and a radial forearm free flap was used uh, for reconstruction. Uh, the reconstruction in this case was done by Dr. Anupam Golash, uh, um, my colleague in, in Woodlands. And um, he did the microvascular reconstruction while I did the uh, neck dissection and the resection of the tumor. So you can assess the, uh, the anastomosis, a close up of the anastomosis. The, the vein is uh, on the top and the artery is uh, deep. And this is a small video. Let me try to. There's a small leak in RT. I'm just giving one more suture, but I've let the blood flow and it's going into the flap. So this was at the end of surgery. This gentleman, he had a very, very uh, good outcome and he actually quit all his habits. And uh, this was done in 2009 and he actually passed away in 2020 from medical, uh, uh, for medical reasons. So he had an 11 year of uh, good life uh, post surgery. So this is a, a rare case of oral melanoma in the right side of the mandible and floor of the mouth. Um, I apologize for the photograph. This was a long time back, uh, I think 2006 or seven. Uh, so that was so the, the digital cameras were still in the primitive stages. So this was the a photomicrograph of the incisional biopsy. You can uh, see the in low par and high par. So this was the uh, neck dissection. It's a bit bloody. I apologize for that. So you can assess on the on the left side. You can assess the defect. We resected the mandible for from the uh, midline till the angle of the mandible, and uh, a fibular free flap was planned for reconstruction. Again, uh, this case was done with Dr. Anupam Golash. So this was after I inserted the 
a flap into place, uh, the fibula into place with the help of uh, mini plates and insetting of the uh, flap on the intraoral aspect. This is three months after um, the surgery. You can see the skin paddle has healed very well. This is when we planned uh, dentures for him. Uh, this is also after three months. And this is the x-ray after three months. And we actually did um, uh, complete dentures for him, which uh, with which he uh, was rehabilitated. And he had uh, he would chew and he was an uh, uh, income tax lawyer and he went back to his profession. But unfortunately, uh, the outcome with melanomas, obviously, as you know, is, is quite dire. And after 20 months, he developed um, metastasis in his liver and then which, uh, which spread to his, um, uh, his spine. And he passed away just uh, before, just uh, close to two years uh, since surgery. So these are a few cases um, from my colleague, uh, Dr. Shagoto Choudhury. I wanted to show uh, the range of uh, reconstruction. Um, this was a, a case of a right um, squamosal carcinoma of the right lateral border of tongue, uh, T2N0 MX. Uh, wide local excision and primary closure was done and obviously with neck dissection. So you can assess the tumor on the right uh, lateral border of tongue encroaching onto the ventral surface. The incision was planned, neck dissection, the flap being raised. Very well done, neck dissection. So this is after the dissection of the tumor, after primary closure. And this was the neck dissection specimen and the resection specimen. This is the lady after two to three months. You can see how the muscle has, the tongue form has taken its previous shape again. This is another case of squamous self carcinoma of the left buccal mucosa, T2 lesion this time. Again, a wide local excision, uh, left marginal mandibulectomy, MRND of, of the left side and buccal fat pad reconstruction, which is another thing which is uh, oral and maxillofacial surgeons often use uh, because we use uh, buccal pad, uh, fat pad for uh, closure of oral communications and other, uh, and we often have used it in uh, reconstruction of cancer cases as well. So this is the lesion. Again, the neck dissection uh, was done. You can see the marginal man mandibulectomy was done. And this was the reconstruction with the buccal fat pad. And you can see how well it has epithelized. The third case is again, it is a T4 lesion uh, where a uh, wide local excision and left segmental mandibulectomy, MRND of the left side. And this time a pec, a pec major uh, pedicle flap was used for reconstruction and the patient was sent for radiotherapy afterwards. You can see how the flap has been inset into place. And you can see how it has epithelized here also. It normally takes starts to take the uh, form of the tissue where it has been placed. The next case again a T4B lesion and N2B and a wide uh, local excision with left marginal mandibulectomy this time and uh, also a posterior inferior maxillectomy, left MRND and a radial forearm free flap this time. You can see how the flap has, uh, has been inset into place. And this is a, a donor site. And this is how it looked after one month. So next I'll come to maxillary um, defects. You can, we often use a free flap to close the uh, defect. But personally, I always prefer to use an obturator if it's a big defect, because uh, if it is half of the maxilla is missing, and if you use a muscle flap or a soft tissue flap, it is very difficult to put teeth in that place. 
it's very difficult to restore it though the patient has better speech if you give uh, a soft tissue coverage but the you cannot put teeth in that place because uh, unless you put bone if you put fibula in that place you can put implants later and give a fixed teeth but otherwise the simplest solution is to give an maxillary obturator uh, obturators are made by uh, specially trained dentists who are called prosthodontists and they help us uh, with the rehabilitation of these patients you see in this case uh, such a big defect the uh, obturator has uh, been done and the patient can chew normally uh, after placement of the obturator and it is a much quicker surgery also because this takes away uh, the reconstructive part uh, of the surgery and we normally do this after one month post surgery we send the patient to the prosthodontist for reconstruction with an obturator so the newer concepts is to if you are putting a bone uh, you can put uh, dental implants uh, in uh, at the same time of the surgery and um, the concept is even if the patient goes for radiotherapy if it is already 6 to 8 weeks normally we send for radiotherapy after 6 weeks uh, if we place implants by that time the implant has nearly integrated and radiotherapy has no bad outcome but if the patient already has had a fibula and has had radiotherapy we normally avoid placing um, implants after radiotherapy though there are newer implant companies which are coming and saying that you can place implants in uh, irradiated mandible or irradiated uh, fibula but i don't have personally any experience Uh, the upper um, the you can see the opg the on the top which is uh, another colleague dr shankarchan choudhury has uh, kindly uh, sent me and the lower one you can see the fibula has been done with a reconstruction plate and two um, uh, uh, dental implants are placed with three fixed teeth and the patient can chew normally and his total function has been restored to his original position so now coming to post operative radiotherapy indications t3 and t4 tumors compromise surgical resections when it is less than 5 mm presence of lymphovascular invasion and or uh, perineural invasion positive lymph nodes with or without extra capsular spread and if the tumor depth is more than 4 mm so how does um, Uh, what is the dental uh, implication in um, before or after radiotherapy it's very important often uh, i get referrals uh, after radiotherapy when the patient has numerous broken roots and um, teeth uh, with radiation caries because uh, the assessment was not done pre radiotherapy so it is very important to do a pre radiotherapy dental assessment and all compromised teeth should be extracted or definitively treated at that point because if we start extracting teeth after radiation there is a 7% incidence of osteo radio necrosis which reduces to 4% which with hyperbaric oxygen therapy which unfortunately we don't have in eastern part of india so we have to have then run a 7% risk of osteo radio necrosis and i get a lot of cases where the oncologist or the surgeon has um, recommended extraction of teeth because it is already 6 months but i must reiterate that 6 months it uh, with 6 months it does not improve the odds of getting oral radio uh, osteo radio necrosis the risk remains the same even after 3 years 4 years so it is paramount to uh, avoid having extractions after radiation and uh, it that is why the patient should be sent for three monthly dental checkups after oral um, radiotherapy and keeping the mouth moist with frequent mouthwash uh, or by use of artificial saliva is very important anesthetic gels must be used for erythema and soreness during and just after radiotherapy so as i said uh, adjuvant chemotherapy which was uh, i was discussing earlier is obviously a controversial topic but has it has been shown to have good outcomes when used with uh, radiotherapy so uh, it is generally reserved for unresectable lesions or where the uh, the surgical outcome has been comp is compromised chemo radiotherapy with cisplatin based reg regime is the most popular bleomycin and 5 uh, fluorouracil has been tried 
uh, nimotuzumab uh, is sometimes used along with cisplatin and carboplatin is used if renal function of the patient is compromised. So as I say to my patients that cancer is going to be just a chapter in your life and not the whole story. So it is uh, our job to motivate the patient and give them an outcome with which they can live a good whole life after the surgery. Thank you very much for our patient hearing. Hello. Thank you, Devodhi, uh, for a wonderful uh, talk uh, about oral cancer management. Uh, it is customary to uh, hand over a certificate to you, uh, solicitation certificate. I uh, am sharing the certificate and uh, reading out, reading it out. We, the members of the Association of Otolaryngologists of India, West Bengal, proudly solicited Dr. Devodish Chakraborty, BDS, FD, SRCS, England, oral and maxillofacial surgeon at PRS Hospital and England Hospital, Kolkata, for delivering the prestigious Timothy Rashmoni Mutabarte Memorial Oration. Organized by the AOI West Bengal on 18th April 2021 at 7 pm on digital platform on a topic a speed in time surgical management of oral carcinoma, the max sex way. Signed by our president, Dr. Subodhi Banerjee, and me, Dr. Kayashi Gorman, honorary secretary. Uh, now I uh, uh, request Dr. Subodhi Banerjee to give the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you. Mm, I sincerely thank Dr. Devudu Chakraborty, who has given a very good oration, and also thanking all our members for joining this oration. I also thank Lupin for giving technical support to make this oration flawless. The certificate we have all seen will be handed over to Dr. Chakraborty uh, later on. Thank you all. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, to all our respected dignitaries and to all doctors, very good evening and pay my regards to all of you. It's a great honor of us as an organization, Lupin Respira, to be associated with the Association of Waterloo of India and that to be West Bengal. We, Lupin Respira, always stands with the doctors and uh, ready to serve more better way in coming future. It was an excellent talk by Dr. Devodip Chakraborty and thanks to Dr. Shinashish Borbon, Dr. Banerjee, Dr. Mukherjee for organizing this particular prestigious oration, my heartiest congratulations to all of you. Today, we are privileged to have the opportunity to inform about our comprehensive uh, basket like Aziflo FT, Telecastel, Bilagram, which is known brand to you. We'll further strengthening our portfolio with, our, with your continuous support. Please take care of yourself, your loved ones, and stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you so much, sir, and good night. Thank you, all the audiences, and stay safe. Uh, who said that?